So the eldest one's my grandson, and he's with me all the time. So all the projects we've got on the go at the moment, um, it was actually him and Connor who started the, the Oh, when they were chopping the, the wood, yeah, yeah, they just went down and said, yeah. right, sod it, we'll start yeah, a fire. Start yeah. A fire. <laughs> yeah, I remember, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, and then, uh, so it was like, oh, please don't do this. This is just going to cause so much more work than I need. Yeah. Um, and then the pair of them just walked past the window of a couple of, you know sheets of metal that they found behind a barn and, and they went off and started a fire and 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 that is where it grew from it was just them two really started, just just, just deciding to just get out there yeah, get amongst it and crack yeah, it on yeah they went in there we'd had uh, i mean it's quite a big uh parcel of uh woodland like you know and we'd never done nothing with it we'd never had time because you know even though we we'd been there quite a while but i still was work, working away mm. um so um We'd never done nothing with it, and uh, they went down there, and then uh, myself and my wife sort of rolled down there to see that you know what damage the smoke was causing. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, and, make uh, sure they don't burn the old place. Yeah, then. and then we started with a little, little, um, uh, just a little pile, so they was going to clear. And uh, as as through lockdown, we would just get up in the morning and then go off and start clearing another area. Myself and Connor, but it was all done old school, so there was no. Yeah. <clears throat> um, all we did was bought a bow saw, right, and the rest was done with like axes, yeah, bow yeah. saws. Um, Connor was like, Look, "You're so old school, like you know, yeah, just, yeah. We, you've got a chainsaw." This guy, I said, "No, I said it's um, I, something that feel good and right it, about it." It was mindful to do it. I'd already done it with my grandson because we'd done some other um, little projects, mm-hmm. and I was teaching him mindfulness, like you know, yeah. so with a bow saw, just with the rock, and yeah, and you just see him disappear into nothingness, like you know, oh, just wow. the, yeah. So I just took that mindfulness into the woods, and and it was actually kind of like get the chainsaw, so get the chainsaw. I said, look, that just it was quite, it was about a ten inch trunk, like you know, the tree had fallen down. I said, just cut it, just get into the flow, and yeah. And afterwards, he just went, wow. He said that was just so peaceful, like you yeah, know, and, and just got the bug. So uh, yeah, yeah. That's think? a real nice kind of little metaphor for where I want to go with the conversation, <laughs> where I feel like a lot of my. Uh, that I've spoken about on this podcast, which we'll get to about, we've got to get back to putting automated luxury down a little bit mm. and just remembering a little bit about hard work and yeah. earning something. But yeah. listen, I'm going to welcome you. Thank you. Darren Hazelwood. You are father, handsome father of handsome Connor Hazelwood, who from you're obviously all part of the Spiritual Awakening Worldwide group. You've got a wonderful movement, um, putting out super uber positive energy. I'm so interested to talk to all of you at various stages, as we, as listeners, viewers know, they've already they've already met Connor and they've talked us through the educational side and the remote learning of Spiritual Awakening Worldwide. And I think your good lady wife, she works in the psychological side of things. Yeah. And you are, you've got the page on Instagram, which is the Fairfield Farm Organics. Yeah. And you're part of the crew as well. So talk us through what you bring to the table and, and how it all came about. And, you know, what, what's the future look like for the energy you're putting out into the world? Yeah, there's a, I mean, the group of us all sort of brings something different. Um, I'm not from the the you know i'm currently i'm currently doing a, a, a level two counseling skills course oh, okay um, but it's sort of all been stepping stones really to here um i'm quite um into the mindfulness the meditation um whilst i was working away um i was like you know what do i do shall i go to the pub again or so um, just briefly i want to step in so we talked just before the podcast about you you were from down south, just outside London, yeah. as we as we learned when we talked to Connor, and there was the famous incident I think that Connor referred to, the Essex boys. Yeah, there was um, a lot of violence and stuff happening at the time down there. There was. It, I mean, it's always been there and thereabouts. We was only just literally just outside London. Um, I'd moved out as a as a youngster from London to to the suburbs, if you like. But yeah. It was progressively going downhill. Um, once upon a time, it was a you know a leafy suburb to live. It was mm. it was nice, but it was 
gradually getting bad, worse and worse and worse. Um, and we had been looking up. Thus, there was a program come on uh, the telly, uh, the island. I think it was called about a young couple with kids who had moved to to Shetland Isles. I think it was, and we kind of got hooked into the program, and we was like, "There's got to be something better," you know, more more natural for for the kids. You know, I was we were kind of the last. Of, you know, I'm 50 now, so we were kind 50? of... 50? Yeah. Oh, you're doing fantastic. <laughs> so <sir>. we were <laughs> like the last of the feral kids, like, you know, we yeah. would get up in the morning, we would go off and play and whatever. Yeah. You know, you cut your teeth falling out of trees yeah. and stuff like that. And it was... The kids didn't have that. You couldn't... Yeah, in the concrete them. jungle, yeah, that, yeah, could, essentially. It, weren't, it wasn't safe. It was the road was under a mile an hour. There was mm. so much traffic and it just weren't safe. And um, so we was looking and... Julia's mum and dad sort of were looking as well, and then um, we um, bought, we put an offering on the place up here that that we pulled out of in the end, <clears throat> and uh, they carried on. So they moved to Woodall Spa, and we used to come up in the summer, and you had the Lido out there, and the woods, the walks, and and then there was a murder down the road from where we lived, and we just went, right, let's just get out. That of was here. it. Like, that, yeah, yeah that's what go. Connor had mentioned. Yeah, so yeah. you up sticks, and you wanted, to, you just wanted more for your kids. You could sense that the concrete and the the lack of that f- like you say climbing trees mm. and just exploring your environment yeah 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 it's, so, it's it, i mean the world's a massive place and you know you'd same with you with your wild mm. camping like you mm. you know and you get out there and you just breathe the air and and mm. enjoy the moment it's, so what would you have been doing then darren when you were working in the city what what was your history when you got out of school what did what did you follow in terms of your career path what did you do well, job wise <laughs> I didn't really have a career path. I left school with not a single thing. I, mm. you know, I didn't excel at school. I didn't, I didn't do, you know. Well Did you at enjoy all. school at all? I Was you just having just, a laugh with the lads and playing football and yeah, all the usual? Like, you know, just one of the lads. Just, yeah, yeah. It was. Um, I always had the ability, but no one really knew how to engage until it was too late. Like you know, yeah. um, uh, I, I loved poetry, and um, the only teacher really. Um, pulled me in was an was a English teacher and and to me I was you know I was one of the lads and to be into poetry weren't cool it yeah you know, keep that, it under your heart yeah. <laughs> that was kind of a bit of a secret like you know you don't, <laughs> you're going to destroy your credibility yeah and uh, so, uh, so there was I'd written a poem in 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 my book and um and he come over and, and I just said, look, I ain't, I'm not even going to bother showing up. for." I was in for the exam. I said, I ain't, I'm not going in. I'm not mm. going to turn up. He said, look, most of your your exam is going to be built up on your, you know, your, your folder, like, you know. He said, mm-hmm. um, fill it up with poetry. And I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not going to do that. Like, yeah. He said, no, he said, you will get, he said, you will get a grade. And and that's what I did. And, and I was constantly on detention which was in the library so he was on you know yeah. i think it's called isolation now but like, and it, i was yeah. going there and i just fill my book up with poetry of what i was feeling at the time and i actually got a grade four cse which was amazing like, right, you know? yeah. so uh, i did thank him for that but i i I, <clears throat> I was um so from the age of 11 um I, I all i wanted to do was be in the marines okay so i would physically trained myself from so from the age 11 that was my career path i, I was gonna so do, you knew then you had I, you were locked that, on totally was that totally. already in your family was your dad no, no, no? I, my grand um there was military in the history but my no my, my dad wasn't uh no no, no, no. Mm-hmm. and uh, um so from the age of 11 i knew that is exactly what i wanted to do wow um <clears throat> that's cool that's uh, knowing something like that and being driven yeah so i would um where I lived was three miles away from all my mates. I'd been because I was in a lot of trouble as a youngster. I got I went to a school which was miles outside the area, which my parents fought to get me in. Um, but all I did was move from one chaos to another chaos, um, which was miles away. And I used to have to get the bus, um, and I'd get off the bus right outside another comprehensive school. So you knew that was going to kick off. Um, we had to wear a uniform, so I'd put my uniform in there because I knew there was going to. So every night when you got off the bus, there was a fight. You know what I mean? It was, right. it was, it weren't good. Um, so in the end, I used to jog it. So I would time myself as part of my exercise. Um, so fitness was key because of what, what I wanted to do. Right. Um, so as it come up at that time, you could join 
the military at 15 and a half as a boy soldier. Um, so I put in for the applied off my own back, um, did the medical, did the, everything I needed to do, got accepted. And then my dad, who was anti-establishment, went, I'm not signing. Oh, no. So he said, if you want to do that when you're 18, you do that when you're 18. So mm. there I was with no career path. What I wanted to do, I couldn't do. So um, can I just jump in there then, Darren, quick? Because it sounds interesting. What's the dynamic with your dad then growing up? You mentioned you're in a lot of trouble. You go to a special school. Your dad wasn't behind you with that. So what what was the dynamics at home? Were you brothers and sisters for you? Do you have brothers and sisters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got an older brother and a younger sister, yeah. Older brother and a younger yeah. sister. And then mum and dad together? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So did you get on good with your dad? Did your dad see you doing this training? Did he sort of get keep an eye on you and think, oh, Jesus, he, the, the boy's the boy's putting effort in here? I, I'm, I, I don't know. I've ne- I never, ever had any feedback. Um, really? The, nah, nah. So it wasn't really, you weren't close with your dad then? <laughs> no, no, no. No, he was, um, you know, you know, I... Uh, after a lot of of looking through, because obviously a lot of things I could have done um, when how I am as a person now, right? You know, you go through that stage in your life where you think, "Oh, I'm a I'm a uh, uh, a circumstance of what I went through." Yeah. Um, so a lot of my self development has really been looking into that and, and the emotional supplied, you know, mm-hmm. I think we tend to say, yeah, okay, it was a, it was a different time. Of course. And things were different. Yep. Um but the emotional side, I used to you know, think oh maybe the, there was a massive lack in the emotional or the intimacy side of, of my childhood. But my parents were brought up by people who was you know, the, my nan Oh, she lived in the underground because of the Blitz Whoa. all the way through her, char- her teenage years. My Whoa. granddad was off fighting in a war, and mm. I, I, you know, I can only assume because you know, sadly they're past now. But you know, I can only assume that when you're emotionally protected through your own experiences, you pass that on to your children. I only mm. was aware with my own children that that. W- I wouldn't be like that. And yeah. I can, I can be totally... That fork in the road. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can be, you know, my kids and, and Julia's, and my wife's the same. Our conversations with our kids are completely yeah. open. Like, you know, Yeah, when I kids. spoke with, with, with your son, um, Connor, you know, we had a lovely chat and he sort of made me pick up there when he was like, he said he have existential chats with you two yeah. at the table, with yeah. his mum and dad. And yeah. I, I think I touched on my own relationship with my parents my mum you know especially who I grew up with you know the it seems so um normal to sort of suggest the idea of having a deeper meaningful conversation with your parents but it's not even on the table for so many young people children whatever the age to actually get in whether you're cracking open what Easter is to your five-year-old you can get into that with them and you can engage them and connect and open them up and explore Oh, if you're 25 and you want to discuss, you know, transcendental meditation because you've read a book, you know, and go there with your parents, whether they're into it or not, just to be like, that is so powerful. Mm. And if you get to exchange that with your own folks. So it's interesting to hear, because I've taken a path like you, it sounds like, where I don't feel like I had that as a small person, as a child. And I'm super aware of being engaged in it with my children. Mm. That's that's a lovely thing to hear when yeah. I see that happen with people. Yeah, and the same with my grandchildren. I mean, yeah. Liam comes round, and and you know, um, <coughs> it, um, Liam and his eldest sister come round. Um, we had them for the weekend, and um, we we went down like the you know where we've got a little field that we do some stuff in, meditation circles and stuff, and uh, they come round, and um, we went down and we didn't tell them what we was doing. But we just went in there and we just sat there. We put the chairs out and um, took our shoes and socks off and just put them on the earth, like and and because mm. we had done it, and you know, take your shoes off, like you know, take your, just come and sit down and do that, like mm. you know. And then we did some meditating and the, and um, where the pine forest is, there's some trees that are sort of touching and swinging in the in the in the wind and that. And I said, just, just close your eyes if you listen. Let's just pretend we're on a sailboat. 
just with the you know the creaking yeah, and that, the creak and the, of the timber and then yeah. in, in um, there's some eagles so as you're going there and uh, we've got some buzzards that are nesting in the woods oh, over the wow. back and um, they come over and they were you know the, like you, the eagle mm. calling mm. and that mm. it was just so monumental it was there and then we went in um, we got the bell tent at Connor Minchin yeah we yep. went in there and did some proper meditation and um, it was quite funny because uh, Liam had been saying about his knees and uh, the following morning, he got up, he said, I don't know what's happened. He said, but my knees ain't hurting today. And how old will Liam be at he's, this point? He's 11. So, so he's 11 so, years yeah, old. So we didn't say what we were doing, didn't say we're going to go down there and you're going to sit down there and do some earth. And we just went down there and... and, and yeah, just just, let, just, just, just present let, with one another, present with the nature, yeah. present with the environment. Yeah. Yeah. So coming back to your childhood then, Darren, you know, that's... that's I mean, it, it's so simple. That sounds very simple, doesn't it? You know, all we're going to do is have a wander in the garden, take our shoes off and just be together for 10 minutes and just appreciate being in the garden. We're just going to allow ourselves to not think about the gas bill or the school uniform or whatever the fuck. Mm. But we all find it really difficult to do that. So with your childhood, you've recognised that that wasn't necessarily there. You're 15, nearly 16. You've made your mind up for four or five years what you want to do. I'm imagining you kind of just as you've said yourself, kind of shielding yourself a bit and kind of imagining a bigger, wider world out there and you're just prepared to go out there and get it and go for it. Then the, then your dad says, no, I'm not going to sign for it. How do you feel at that point and what happens then? Uh, well, if you like, it was like uh, the rave scene and all that was just kind of bubbling up at the yeah. time. So it, it, I, I pretty much... At fifteen and a half, we was we was drinking. We would, and you're in London still at this point. We, yeah, no, we were just on the edge. Of, just off, on the just edge. on the edge. Yeah, um, sort of in. The, we're just on the edge of the London boroughs, and mm. um, yeah, the party scene was just kicking off, and and I pretty much fell into oblivion. It so was, we kind of late eighties get, yeah, getting on now. Like eighty six, yeah. yeah, and um, yeah, so it was kind of. Uh, I, I went. Uh, work with my uncle in a metal polishing um, company, which mm -hmm. was horrible. It was horrible. It's noisy, it's dirty, it's dusty. It's smelly it's as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's just dirty. You, just come, you know, it, come home from work. I used to have to, I had a motorbike at the time, so I would jump on there and you come home like a Coleman, like, you know what I mean? It was mm. horrible. Um, but one thing he did say to me was that, um, and, and we were working polishing these great big metal um poles, polishing them, and, and you've got massive machinery and... And, and I just looked at him, I said, oh, this is horrible. And he said, yeah, but just remember this. He said, no one ever died of uh, hard work. Yeah. And and carried on working. So he owned the company, but he was physically working at the time. And uh, I used to, um, I was I was with a couple of elder mates and they were working on uh, on the roads and that. And then and they said, how much money there was? And then they said, there's a job, do you want it? And so I went, yeah, I'll have that. And, and after that, all I ever did was chase money. Right. Um, I, I, um, I'd blown my motorbike up and I got on a train and um, me and Ju like my Julia, my wife, we, um, had sort of, we'd been to school together and uh, I'd got on a train and she happened to be at the, at the platform. So we got talking and then we see a few, each other a few times. I was off in oblivion world like you know the world was a party i'd work hard and so and you're working hard and i like we'll come back to you 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 mentioned that you you know you, you your good lady wife julia you with to this day and you've got your lovely family and grandkids you know you went to school together so we'll get back to that but so i'm just putting it together now the picture in my mind and maybe for listeners as well so you've 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 been art set on going into the into the military it doesn't happen. Your dad puts a kibosh on it. You kind of go, okay, well, I've got to earn money. I'll get out there, work with your granddad. That sticks in your mind. Was it your uncle, did you say? Uncle, yeah. You, yeah. you work with your uncle, and it sticks in your mind to this day that he mm. says, hard work never killed anybody. No. And then you get offered a job. This is often what happens, isn't it, when you when you start getting useful as a, as a lad with your hands and your ability. You get a job chasing some money, get on the roads, and there's banter and all that. Do you take that work ethic with you, right? Yeah, yeah totally, get stuck totally. in. It was... Um, that, you know, we used to. Have, there used to be a lot of lot, the Irish used to come over working on the roads, and and you know they worked hard. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. So if you didn't have that work ethic, you didn't last long. Yeah. Um. So I was a young lad. I was you know physically fit. I, I was already you know most people go into that game and it takes them a month to even kick in. Like you know, mm. but I was already pretty. Yeah. 
Fit. Well, yeah, you've been training yeah. for four years. Yeah. You've got that mindset as yeah. well. And with, yeah. you, with your uncle putting that in there, yeah. that's already there. Because yeah, if that, you're deciding to run for the bus or run past the bus, you've got that in there, aren't you? You're yeah. prepared to crack on. Totally, yeah. And then um, I was working in, in the city. Um, so I used to commute home and uh, I'd missed the train. Um, and uh, so I, I thought I'll, there was a pub at Fenchurch Street Station at, right on the platform. So I thought I'll go and have a couple of pints and then I'll get on the next one. So I went there and then as I walked down, so we hadn't seen each other for two years maybe. And Julia was standing there and then we just got, we got, and that's how we met back up. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we, I mean, we, we met each other when we was 10 before we went to senior school. Right. And then we was in the same form class all the way through. Yeah. Um, so, sort of, so, and then when we left school, we sort of parted, you know. Yeah, as you do, in, yeah. Bumped into each other. And then you, you, you bump and, into each yeah. other on that train, on that yeah. train station there. So that was, um, we got together and then, um, so, uh, you know, kind of it was always in the back of my head at 18, I'll, I'll you know, sign up and I go off and do me, me stuff. But obviously I, I met Julia and mm. that was, didn't matter. I was off working, I had a good work ethic, I was earning good money. Yeah. And I met the person I wanted to be with, like, you know yeah. what I mean? It sort of, um, yeah. yeah, it was really surreal, if you like. like so you know. don't end up going off to the, to chase the marine dream, but you've started to build something out of your work ethic that you'd put together with that in mind anyway. You obviously meet, and make a f w very wise decision to this mm, day yeah. in 2020, and you're mm. still together with a blossoming family. So when you when you and Julia do sort sort of put roots in the ground, then what are you doing at that point, and and what are your visions for a family yourself? Are you just working and enjoying time and going out together, and are you, or are you thinking about having a family pretty soon? Or we we um, yeah, I mean the, her eldest lad come along pretty much. There you go. Within a very short time, so um, it wasn't uh, the, the the thing with the military was for me was it's a you know part of my I I was I'd, all through my senior school I knew what I wanted to do I was going to sign up for the full term I wanted to do um, the French Foreign Legion at the end of that for some crazy reason so, mm -hmm. so I had a whole team with the the minute we sort of met. And my lad come along. Well, it's to me, it's not a, a mm. married man's game. And if yeah. you've got kids, forget it. Like you know. So um, because of my work ethic, I always used to work on price. I wouldn't go on day work, even as a, as a youngster. Um, we was off on price, and and that was it. Like you know, so it yeah. was flat out working, yeah. um, moving from contract to contract. And chasing the money. Would like, you be you know? going around the country then, Darren, or would you be mainly down sort yeah, of mainly down south at that time? A lot yeah. going on. Yeah. And so, when your boy comes, are you kind of how, how does that impact you as a young man? What would you? How old would you have been then when when your first boy turns up in on planet Earth? Eighteen. So you're eighteen. Yeah. So you're young. Yeah. So ha can you remember how that felt when we're pregnant? I loved it. I thought it was great. Yeah. Really? I, I, yeah. You weren't scared. I, I wouldn't say scared. I was nervous of of what, my own ability to be a dad. Mm. Do you know what I mean? No, there's no books. You, well, you know, at yeah. the time there was no internet. It was, yeah, yeah. you know, I wasn't a great reader of books. So you mm. know, what you're going to go on what you've got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was, I was nervous of my own ability to be a dad. But the, um, you know, I. I um, the, you know, the, the night he was born, I went outside and, and made a promise to the moon that, that you know I would do your damnedest, do, do my damnedest, and, yeah. and 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 hoped that that would be good enough. Like you know, what I mean, it was um, the intimacy side was quite natural. I was quite a sensitive child, even though I was desensitised. If that makes yeah, sense. yeah, that's kind of where <laughs> I was wanting to go. Is when you get told you're going to be a dad, do you? Do you think, right, I can grab this, I can grab this and I can, I'm thinking subconsciously here, you know, like I can give what I haven't had in a way as well. Uh, in an unaware, in an unaware in way, totally yeah. unaware, um, I, I, with your kids, sometimes you're, I think you, you have to put a bit of bravado on and, and be a dad, well what's, what's a divine masculine who who mm. teaches that that you know mm. I, I think i was lucky that i had my granddad i had my uncle i had good male moral rod, moral rodles yeah to to follow um and 
to to be what it was to be a man like you know yeah. what I mean you were either a hero or you were a provider which one are you going to be I wanted to be a hero well that's mm-hmm. taken out of my hands now I've got to be a provider what does a provider do so you make it up as you go along you yeah. know and yeah. make sure that everyone's provided mm-hmm. and I'm sure you know um, it's only really been the last five years that I've been on this sort of uh, internal progression mm-hmm. um, and I was always work orientated I have to pay the mortgage I'm the provider I have to do yeah. this you want that right I'm going to provide that for you you know yeah. and, and boom 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 it goes along so mm-hmm. uh, that's that's kind of the way it went so you're working you're busy in the city you're on price work and for people who don't know price work is basically you know the job's worth that much and people on price will just crash it in and do it in half the time that somebody who's on a day work or on a mm. or on a salary would do because they're just going through the gears. Mm. So you're gobbling up work. So you you go on to have another two children. You have got three kids. Are you around as much? Are you still working? Are you kind of are you making the time to have the moments? Or are you just like a lot of dads are, just mm. providing and then shattered? Oh kind of a yes and no at that one yeah um we we used to go off camping with the kids mm-hmm. um and um we used to do, you know then we bought a caravan so so uh, then i was kind of had been moved up into a supervisory level um the, one of the directors had kind of sort of see some potential even though i left school with nothing mm-hmm. i had that that's that work ability, ethic, isn't it? yeah hard work won't um, kill you no and uh so i'd made a supervisor and and We'd, we'd been camping and, and, and we decided to get a caravan and then we used to do like magical mystery tours around France. So we would, first time we went to France, we didn't even take a map. We just went, right, I'm going to head in that way. Oh, and so we great. end up to where we end up and we used to do things like that. So oh, that's amazing. When, you know, um, and I used to do this one time, I think I did 26 hours of driving without stopping just wow. to get there. And then once we were there, we would have, we'd go off on canoeing adventures. And, and so... Oh, that's you awesome. know, I would do lots of work. If the kids wanted to do something, we would do something. Um, mm. And uh, so I feel the only, you know, with the way I did work, um, you can't replace time, you know what I mean? There's, mm. and, and kind of, uh, you know, uh, you can't buy that time. So when your kids grow up and, and you look at them and you think, God, where did that time go? Mm. That is, if there was a regret with the children was that, there was a lot of time spent earning, but we was a, tr- if you like, a traditional uh, family growing up. So I would yep. go off and work, and and Julia, mom, mom would be making was, home, and yeah, yeah. Was, was, which is which, a fucking full time yeah, job. job. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's um, one of the most important full time jobs on earth. Yeah, which we seem to have removed from society, Sorry. where we send two parents to work and send the kids up the road to be looked after by somebody else, mm. which is bizarre. Yeah, it wasn't until I mean Julia took some different jobs and uh, she used to work in the city before having kids um in insurance and um she didn't particularly want to go back to that um so yeah it was just a traditional if you like an old-fashioned mm. family unit like you know mm. and mm. and it worked you mm. know it's, it's um like you say two people can go off for work and buy two nice cars that they can't afford but yeah. you can't have the holidays you know we, yeah. we could have gone off it weren't until the kids were older that we started off on the package holidays and that type of thing and, mm-hmm. and then the caravan went so mm-hmm. uh, but we had great the kids still speak about it like, yeah you know, well um, it's that that's the stuff that i'm so so lucky that i managed to muster and learn early is that that time i mean everybody tells it i mean that's the thing with these old kind of wive tales or you know ideas and memes is that they're so ingrained in us that it's almost like we don't take them seriously Mm. but you can't get time back you can spend money but you you know you spend time that's it Mm. that is it and trying to keep that balance right is that's my my goal in this life is just trying to make sure that i get enough work done to make sure that i've got the time that i want so i'm i'm um, when I speak to people like yourself who, you know, you've been aware of it, you know, you said that to the moon when your boy's born, you know, you, that's in there, isn't it? Mm. And it must be interesting for you now then, as you mentioned, you sort of say five, the last five years or so that you've kind of having this kind of internal um, sort of awakening maybe and looking back at things and piecing the puzzle together and realising how the map formed and then that can be a wonderful thing, it can be a painful thing, it can be a difficult thing, but overall, all of those things seem to kind of collate and create a lifting, elevated presence mm. and a 
and um, that can pass on in abundance. And as we've already heard, with the way you know the grandkids are sort of they're feeding from that now, aren't they? Mm. And it sounds like even when I spoke to Connor, that family unit you've got, and my family will come over and we'll do one of these these nights. That that all that all those lessons and all those um, experiences are, are bubbling through everything. Absolutely, it's um, the the um, I mean the, the, the my self development kind of Julia was had done a sort of counselor training. She was doing her own thing. That then gave me time, and and then um, it was it was actually my dad coming up. He's the the, the brother who told me you ain't gonna die through hard work. He had been diagnosed with terminal cancer my dad's a, a sort of old school he didn't want to tell me on the phone he come up and obviously you know back in back in the day it weren't you know you as a boy it was don't cry don't cry don't cry yeah cry and i'll give you something to cry about and, yes you know that type of thing and and he come up and broke down and I, you know absolutely broke down and, and do you ever seen that no, from your dad no, no 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 and it was i didn't know what to do i didn't know how old were you been then it was only about eight years ago. It so was, you're, that you're, was the trigger for my spiritual awakening. That so was seeing that, your dad actually allow himself to be in his skin. Yeah, he couldn't hold it anymore, and he cried like a baby. And I didn't know what to do, and and I just put my arms around him, hugged him, and it was like having a child on my shoulder. You, you know, when mm. the, the child sobs, and I just held him like you know, I said, "It'd be you know, okay, it'd be all right, like you know." And it was kind of like roles reversed as. Allowing, giving him permission just to go, let it go, let it go. It's not something that I can do. It's something mm. I'm currently working on. Of course. Um, even today, I still struggle with mm. because of my ingrained and 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 <clears throat> when they they kind of been up for the weekend and and went and I, I just looked at Julia and obviously Julia through a job is at that time was massively more advanced than mm. I was. I just spent everything's a lie like you know and she said well i said well you get battered for crying like when you was a child and, and my, I just, my dad's broke down like you know and that sort of was the trigger was to look for answers now like that just that was pandora's box coming open yeah. like you know and a lot of mirror work for myself um mm. some real deep reflecting on on stuff and um so i i, I then so Julia would be teaching, I think she was doing four at the college four nights a week. So instead of watching rubbish on the telly, I was doing YouTube and looking yeah. for deep and meaningful stuff, um, which then I would use. He gave me the tools to go into my own head and take the engine apart and put it back together, mm. you know, to put the right Absolutely. pipes in the right place. And, yeah, and, because uh, so much of it, Darren, is that we grow up in environments under a certain set, set of circumstances and generally the house has its set of rules because dad likes it this way and mum and dad's expectations are that and that's how it was for them and that's how it'll be for us and obviously as we've moved through time we 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 are always learning we're always becoming more abundant with information with our experiences so we can start to see things more but it it never ceases to amaze me how locked in we can be even shoulder to shoulder with our peers like we can be locked into the traditions or the expectations of of the generations before us, even though, I mean, I, pick, I sort of imagine your dad there when he breaks down to you, he's not just crying for his brother, he's crying because of life, because it ends, and because when it, when we do get to those points of real, I don't know, really being at the edge, facing things, I mean, I know you guys do DMT meditations and things, and I, I do things along those lines as well and when you're taken to I don't know there's a place it's almost like if someone tells you something really bad you know that that maybe you're not going to make it you know you've got you hear this all the time with people with near-death experience or people who have come through terminal illness when you get the news that the lights are going out that's it all of a sudden we we muster the strength to to raise up all those deleted files that we we try to bury mm -hmm subconsciously or otherwise and all of a sudden all the wiring just comes up and then we're like whoa and then we want to we want to fix it we want to put it right we want to hold on we want to and I, I almost feel like your dad there in that moment it felt like to me as you're telling it it's like he it's like he wants to tell you he loves you and he didn't want you he did want you to be able to cry or mm. you know what i mean like mm. just let it all out mm. and when we're looking at ourselves 
and trying to break those patterns and those chains and then you're recognizing there's so much anger comes through you for me anyway it was like this and not dissimilarly to you you know when i started to think hang on a minute everything's not how i've been told it's supposed to be and the values that i've had set in place for me that i then project out into the world aren't really mine they're not really me and it's never felt right but i've always kind of done them because that's what's expected or you know a clip around the ear or whatever it is so then when you start unraveling and go hang on a minute you know there can be anger frustration and ultimately sadness and hope you know for me anyway of like all oh, right okay maybe me mum and dad or whatever happened it wasn't the greatest way that it could have been or we didn't realize that or whatever it is and as you say we're, we're lucky in a time where youtube and the internet and the ability to just realize why do i watch fucking every single sports event that's ever on even though i don't like rugby i'm watching do you know what I'm like? why do i do that why aren't i learning something <laughs> why aren't i actually wondering about my existence and thinking what can i do is this it it's interesting mm -hmm. isn't it and painful as yeah. well i mean I, I i honestly with what i've learned you know say five years it's probably six or seven now but it's it's kind of what I'm learning now, or I see stuff, I learn stuff. You think, well, why aren't they teaching this at school? Mm. You know, we live in such a violent place. Let's, how do you take that violence out? Well, let's treat, let's teach some meditation. Um, and and uh, so I was, I was working in London, and then I think, oh, what, what am I going to do with myself? I, I don't want to go to the pub anymore. You know, after I finish work. Um, and then so I booked onto a mindfulness and meditation course, and during the whole of that two and a half years down contract that I was doing down there, every Tuesday I would go off and do it. And, oh, and, wow, and I was, cool. the, the first time I, I did do it was, it was kind of linked in. I'd already started on the the, the progression that I was well, on, the, on the road I was on. And um, I did, that was the best thing I ever did. I, I, I have to sleep on my own because like you say, with the anger, I've always been at war with the world. Mm. You know, the whole world I've always been at war with. And one of the subconscious ways of dealing with that anger is, I have night. I used to have night terrors, so I would get up and act out. So I have to sleep on my own. And uh, th once I started the meditation, it stopped, completely stopped. Wow. I don't. I don't have Powerful. it. I'm, you know, yeah. I, yeah. So I don't actually. I still have the the night. I can have extreme nightmares, but the night terrors where I would get up and act out what yeah. was going on, even though I was still asleep, has stopped. Right. And the meditation was, was the, the... Just making peace, like sort of settling you, yeah. set whatever that kind of, um, yeah, that that commotion. Chaos in my head. Yeah, yeah. because, I know I'm no scientist <laughs> and I don't do any, but like, it's almost like whatever our instincts are, you know, your generation from your fathers, your instincts to be sensitive and to, to maybe follow though that sensitivity but then that's being ironed out by a generation above you where that's not acceptable then you kind of that all gets locked and malfunctioned and then the frustrations are coming out like say in ways we don't even understand and you see it all the time with road raging guys on the road who are just fucking you know up late for work and they're drinking whatever they're having the breakfast on the road and they're drinking red bull and having a fag and fucking the traffic lights you fucking yeah you know and it's like if you were to sort of zoom in and then go in on a micro level and start looking at what happened the night before, or maybe what happened the day before that and what happened at the week, you know, and all, you'd start to see like a pattern of like just little details of things, just not, just not clicking and not being in flow and not being in harmony. And then it just comes out of yeah. us, especially men. Yeah, I'm terribly. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're built. We, aren't we, we, me and Connor was working together and I had started on this self development. I'd watched a uh, YouTube, you know, my, it was actually um, Till Swan. I got hooked in, uh, on the, which is a very entry sort of level um, self help kind yep. of uh, m uh, provider. She does videos yep. of ev everything. I don't know if you've ever seen her. Right, I've uh, seen some bits, yeah. yeah. And um, but it sort of for me it was an entry level. So I knew I didn't know what feelings were. Do you know what I mean? I hadn't been taught feelings. Um, so it then. Would I, be, I know I would be feeling this way, and I'd go in there and I'd put in there, and something else come up, and then she, some of it on some of us, I recommend you watch this video. Yep. So for me, on an entry level, that was quite a key. It was a, yeah. like a grounder. Um, but I, I had been into 
the self help for quite a while. And me and Connor were working together, and it was up, it was up here, and um, we were working together, and and he was allowed to be emotional. I never give myself permission to be that way. So you know, you would be the rock for or the safe harbour. Go out mm-hmm. and sail out, and mm-hmm. if the ch- seas are choppy, you know where to come back in. And we would, and we started talking. And once we started talking, it was like a so that sixty minute drive drive home yep. turned in. It was like Alan Watts, just yeah. me and him. You know what I mean? Yeah. It would just be banging up. He just looked at me, and the first time we started talking, and he just looked at me. He went. You're deeper into this than I thought, like, you know what I mean? Oh, and it that's was, lovely. What a lovely yeah. thing. And and I just wanted to ask you there, Darren. So when as you're bringing the kids up, did you did you find the kids being a dad and parenting itself, did you find that maybe looking back, maybe not at the time so much, but do you find now looking back that maybe that started to help with, as you mentioned, he was allowed to be sensitive. You didn't put the blinkers on him. You didn't shut him down. There's probably moments when you were back, because I get this, mm. I've got it programmed. I've got anger programmed into me from the way my mum brought me up. You know, the first reaction to everything was fucking, mm. you know, and sometimes I can feel myself get a, get towards the trigger and then like, whoa, hang on a minute, I'm repeating a pattern here and like this, you know, like this, but it's in me. Mm. Did you recognise any no. of that with the kids? <clears throat> no. not, not until sort of I started on this journey myself um, and and there's been times on reflection that, that you, if they cried, they cried. I, I weren't that, you know, that way. Mm. I was much more softer. Would you scoop I them up and be, give them a cuddle? Come here, let me give you a cuddle. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'd kill, cuddle them, I, mm. I would tell them I love them and, mm. and, you know, they would say they love me, like, you know, mm. so that side of it was more, I was more softer than than, yeah. than I had had because I knew how that felt when, I, and I was really sensitive. I, I was, you know, my nan would call me a rough diamond, you know what I mean? Mm. It was, it mm. was, um, I was so sensitive, but I had to desensitise myself mm. for my own sanity, like, yeah, you know what I mean? Course. Or, it, it, in, you know, you watch it on the on the on YouTube on some of the videos. It's how you learn to survive. Yes. You know, um, and that's one thing. Um, and it, it was Connor was quite young when I, uh, at the time, and he was playing football, and and they were having a game. There was he was playing for the local team, and and he had done some tackles, and someone kicked the ball, it hit him in the face, and you just you knew it hurt. It hit him mm. right on the end of the nose line. He just looked at me, and I just went. Like that, because he just looked at me as if the song I'm gonna cry, like you know. Mm. And I just went, mm-hmm. "Not now, not now." Like mm-hmm. you know, looking back, that was my dad. In that was my dad mm-hmm. speaking, not me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I do sometimes reflect on that experience. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, as a rule, like you know, um, I. But I, that I'll step in there, there, because that gives me food for thought. Because my little boy, one of them, the older one, is much more prone to the drama. So. You know how it goes. We're on the park. One of them slips off the whatever seesaw, you know, and one of them will make a bit of a drama, even though it's it hasn't really hurt him. It's mm. just a bit of a shock, and he likes, you know, the pamper. Mm. Whereas the other ones, you know, you, if you're going out, well, you're all right. Get off me. I'm all right. You know, so it's really weird. But what I've noticed, as you say there about your lad it, getting it, Connor with a fake football with a face, or the face with the football. I said to my boys, and, and I've heard myself say, you know, there's certain times when, you know, you're going to go into the automatic cry when you maybe wouldn't if you give it some thought. And I was trying to discern between emotional crying and kind of like when you should try and be brave. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And I don't know if I'm right or if I'm wrong or whatever, but like I was saying to my oldest boys, like, look, you know, if you do fall over and at your knee when you're playing with the boys... Instead of you, you know, like with your brother, he doesn't just start crying. He'll just try and brave it up because he's just hurt his knee. Whereas if someone, if you're sad because of something has, has been said that's not very nice or you're sad about mm. something, that's very different. Mm. But I sort of found myself saying to him, man, if you hurt your knee and try and brave it up, boy, you know. Mm. So I'm giving you a good ticket there so I can have one. <laughs> I just think it's it, different. Kids are different. You know, all three of my kids are totally different. Yeah. <clears throat> um, you knew when one was more emotional, they were more prone to cry, and the other one's as hard as nails. But when he cries, you know he's hurt himself. Yeah, like, it's a real mean, deal. He's, he's just, you know, he used to walk by. Like, you know, you know, you, I knew myself if they had hurt themselves, they, they needed me or they uh, were having a little sob because they wanted something. You know what I mean? Yes. It's, it's, it's having that yeah. about me. Um now knowing that I did that subconsciously, because mm. years ago I wouldn't have 
understood okay. that because of my own lack of yeah. understanding like, yeah. you know it's yeah. Uh, yeah. but um yeah so you know we do we, that's really what it was like yeah, yeah. well so as we move f- nearer the day then so you guys eventually you moved up here yourselves you followed the grandparents up um you came up to woodall spa and then you started a life in the flatlands of the shire with the fields and the woods and you started building towards where you are now, which is with Spiritual Awakening Worldwide and the movement and everybody's on an awakening. You've said yourself, you, Julia, your wife, she's a she's a psychologist and she helps people with all sorts of ailments that, is, that are more and more prevalent in today's world than ever mm. with, I think, my personally, I think with the internet and screens and just the peer pressure and the complete lunacy of trying to keep up with 7 billion people in the world. And you you've got the farm side of it yeah with the fairfield organics yeah that's um so how does that all come about then i mean we mentioned at the start of the podcast there the boys just started chopping wood and clearing the clearing the forest a bit and clearing the wood at the back of your place yeah I, I, it's with with my sort of journey it's been a kind of load of stepping stones but not stepping stones in front of each other i've skittled all over the place and <laughs> and, and, and um we we um it started with being asked to go cook, like as a witness for a, a chicken odor, and and you know we we get caught up in you know living down there. You go out and you get your chicken two pound fifty. You eat half of it and launch the other half in it. You had no concept of what it was. Yeah. And um, when so uh, the the we was asked to go as a sort of give a witness statement. Yeah, no worries, I'll give a witness statement. Off it went. And then bang, come through a letter to appear in court. I was like, what, 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 what's this about? Like, you know, and um, so I ended up going to, w- w- there was only three of, three of us out of the village who had done this. So the three of us all had to go to court. And part of the, so that farm was found um, guilty of odour. Okay, talk us through that then. So what what had happened then? So, so a little chicken farm had expanded into a massive intensive livestock unit and obviously the bigger it got, the smellier it got. Right. Um, lots of complaints had come in uh, or, or um, had been given and mm. and the because they come under the environment agency, they, they, they we was asked to do a witness statement for okay. the impact on, on that. Um, so we merrily did that and... Uh, and and f- the food side of it, that was my journey into understanding what it was because um, obviously this is chicken land. And um, mm-hmm. so um, I was asked to contact the, the company who run it. And um, so I get goes on the internet, find it, trying to find out where, where they're to speak to someone in their headquarters. And the nearest office was in Ireland and... The main company that owned it was in Brazil. Oh, wow. So it's the major <laughs> player in this area. But, you know, if you want to speak to someone, it's in Northern Ireland. Or if you want to speak to the actual company you own, the everything, it's in Brazil. So, so, Jesus. So, uh, uh, yeah, so we went to court, um, got grilled by a bar- two barristers for an hour and a half in, in Lincoln Court. And uh, they were found guilty. Part of the improvement of what they were going to put in place was for us to go and visit a chicken farm, a state-of-the-art chicken farm. And... Um, so we went down there and got a brand new pair of wellies and overalls and air net and everything, you know, feet in the disinfectant mm. and as you do. And uh, this was their state of the art thing. And, and so we went in there and it was just like, for me, being from where I was from, having no idea what food, proper food was. Yeah, how it gets where it is. Yeah. And, and I just walked in there and I just went, wow, this is like, this is like outfit, you know what I mean? This yeah. is outfit for chickens, like, you know, mm. and... Uh, and and that started my food journey. So as well as my spiritual journey, I was learning about food and and um, and ev- you know everything regarding that. So you know, um, and I learned so much. Um, <clears throat> part of at the same time as that, and I had my own company. And two thousand eight, I I had to pack it up. Yeah, and I think uh, a lot of people did, didn't yeah. they, with that credit crunch? Yeah. Mm. So uh, and. I'd been, so before learning the spiritual side, I'd been learning how to grow food, which had coincided with the court case. And um, part of my uh, experience, I just said to you, I don't know what, I just need to go and dig a, dig a patch up and I want to plant some potatoes and, and stuff. And that. But the minute I put my hands in the ground, it was like 
ev- all the pressure that I was under. It was not a nice period of, of yeah. life. Mm. And all the pressure. And the minute I, I started doing it, was it just went. It was. I can only compare it. There's a, a, there's a film called The Dome. Right. Right. And it sort of this dome comes out of the sky and plants over the top of a village. And when I was in that vegetable patch, that's how I felt. There right. Was, the outside world no longer existed. Okay. Um, and, and and that's where I got sort of. So, so the two things come in, coincided. Yeah. Um, and then with what we've just gone through now, so what I, I'm doing is a, is like a, a permaculture. So it's um, what I'm going to is a CSA, is a community community supported agriculture. Okay, yeah, so, interesting. So yeah. so um, not everybody has the knowledge to grow. Not everybody a has, or that's a and b. Nobody's got time, but everybody wants to grow and know where the food comes from. So the community supported agriculture is is that we will grow say a twenty week um, more aimed at. S- salads and that type of stuff yeah totally organic no no chemicals no n- pure just pure and everyone buys into that and so the actual people who are buying it are the the, the farm i got you yeah. yeah so so you know it will be but then it will be um you know if you go to certain supermarkets and you look at their organic section there's nothing yeah um so on the few people that i've spoken to Everyone, the minute you say it, everyone, and you t- say what the story is, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, they, they want to pay a part of it, of course. And and um, with the therapy side of it, is um, so with me doing the counselling course, I, you know, Julia's the counsellor. I don't want to be a counsellor, but mm-hmm. what I want is to be do the e- eco therapy oh. and, and and to bring the mental side of of. So when I put my hands in the ground, it's earthing. Yeah. So most people go, oh, I'm earthing with my feet. I've got no shoes and socks on and my feet are touching the floor, yep. but it's no different. You put your hands in there when you're growing something, yep. the same process happens. You'll connect, reconnecting with mm. the earth, and mm. that's what I got from it. And that's what I want to bring in to, to people. So if not only, you know, they're part of the community-supported agriculture, but come down and you do it as well, you know, have an hour of therapy and look yeah. after your own food while, while we're doing it. Um, and... Um, and also have like um, it's got, uh, what I want to do is aim it more at men than than but women would be uh, of course uh, welcome but uh, more you know I find that men ho- have nowhere to go and be men. Do you know we, we all used to go to the pub and and yep. talk rubbish. You talk about diesel engines and politics yep. and yep. Th- there's no places for men really to offload now and be especially in that way, Darren. I yeah. mean, in, in in a way where. You know, again, so many layers to that because, as you call it, earthing. You know, connecting, doing something natural. You're outside. You, the, and uh, we had an allotment. We didn't get very far, but I, because we didn't have time with the three kids. I just, I just no excuses. I just couldn't. I just didn't. I'm, I'm not ready. I'm not ready at the moment with the way my life is and the way it's structured. I just didn't have the time to do it justice. But I read a lot and did a lot of research and I, I did all the hard bit. I'd like a fucking. <laughs> I think I had a 15 metre by 8 metre plot that I dug right, and got it all prepped and got it all blacked out, ready to go, and then I never did anything again, so I did all the hard work. <laughs> but um, there's something about, and especially, like you say, for men, you know, the pub has gone now. I mean, we'll not get into the whole COVID thing right now, but the whole culture's changed, you know. Pubs were turning into chains of eateries and what have you anyway. Yeah, men being somewhere, if it's not the football, and again, the conversation or the, the way of thinking, as you mentioned with the generations before us, you know, it's changing. Mm. And men getting together now, you're a lad who's worked with your hands, I'm a lad who's worked with my hands. This podcast has been born out of like me trying to bridge the gap between the lads like me, who I know are out there, who want to think about things, who maybe do write poetry, but they don't want to fucking tell anybody, mm. or they do think a certain way creating those avenues for people and allowing someone to see, oh, he's a, he's just a lad and he's thinking that way. Yeah. So that's an amazing way of trying to, yeah, round that off mm. with the with the, the psychology, the physical doing. Because then when those lads get that actual grown food, that's powerful. Mm. When you fucking grown that food and you did that. It's, to me, it's, it's um, nurture. Yeah, it's nurture, you know, it's, and nature. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's you, you know, you. For some people who have no um, to look after a plant is no different to look after a human being. 
you know, you got to feed it, you got to water it, or or it's gone. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And and mm. and I think people are missing that in their life, but um, it's just creating that safe place for men or women mm. just to get into that, that flow of being okay. It's you know, you want to. Make some poetry, mm. you know. You mm. want to go and hug that tree over there? Let's go and, let's go and hug it. Mm. You know, it's not gonna. Mm. No one's gonna get no. hurt by doing that. Mm. You know, and if you want to do that, do it. Like, and know? the alleviation that we get, you know, is just fucking. I mean, it sounds silly. Bl- blokes watching now, they're these fucking idiots yeah. talking about fucking planting shit. And, yeah. But to know where you, you said before, knowing where your food comes from, I'll never forget working in. I went to do a job when I was a kid in a factory which probably similar it was the net and the the boots wellies and disinfectant and i had to put pork chops in uh polystyrene trays so i was just on a conveyor belt and these just big lumps of pork that had just been sort of machine cut i just had to grab a couple out and pair them up and i can remember i only did a day in there because it was just mad i thought whoa this is crazy but i'll never forget the feeling of like when you look at your meat you know like and it's just presented lovely and it's in a little package that isn't what it is. No. It, it's just mad. But most people, I mean, you know, you, we, we, I was working on the contract when the last one I was on before uh, the, the, the shutdown and I made a decision, right, this is, I want to do the farm as a, a, an old school traditional uh, farm of knowing where, you know, the ducks have come from, knowing where mm-hmm. the chickens have come from, educating the kids who want to come. So if people who are part of the community supported agriculture have got kids come along, or let's see that your chicken isn't that's that's a chicken not not something in a tray you know what i mean it's mm. it was once mm. the life so that's where going back to my childhood was you know you 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 go to school dinners and you used to say a prayer before dinners yeah it, you know now yeah. it's just hoof it in yeah. front of the telly what's left goes in the bin and it was never nothing and we don't think about any of it we don't consider i mean it all seems so flippant and kind of normal but when you really do think about what we're losing every time we get further away from our sus that's our sustenance what we put in our bodies is literally what we are it's what what gives us the opportunity to be healthy and to enjoy a, a period of time on this on this earth mm. with when we get in into our elder years we're still able to move and be functional because we put nutrients and minerals in our bodies or we just eshed in like you say stuff off shelves that with with fucking god knows what in it and like then we start breaking down and things go wrong and we don't know why Mm. and we won't know why because we never paid attention i think now at this time you know in culture we're aiden and i often talking about you know there's a lot going on at the point of us doing this we're just pre-lockdown for the second time in covid as we record this you know there's been talk with the government about what's a um a shopping item, a an essential item. Now, fuck me. What's an essential item to you? Mm. What's an essential I- item to me? You know, how many carrots can you buy? You know, it's we're at that point and it doesn't make any sense. And I think across the board with everything, with the phones, with the social medias, with comparing people against one another, with the whole missing physical things we do. I was just talking to somebody earlier today about, you know, it's not just, you know, the people who are paying attention to how phones are and internet and all this interconnectivity is actually harming us. You know, initially we're on the surface of things. We're talking about the time we spend in the screens and, you know, and but we're not thinking about, well, yeah, the banking app's great. It's not just Facebook we've got to whinge about. You know, the banking app's great, but like once upon a time you used to go down to the bank, you used to ring somebody, go to the bank, speak to somebody, make an appointment, and then you would, you would honour that appointment. You would go to the bank, you would stand in the bank, you would speak to somebody, you would have an exchange, you would come away. You know, like, all of those kinds of things we've eroded, like, we're, the, the connections to one another, the connections to to something measurable and real are, like, just evaporating. And it's novelty at first. It's amazing. Did you know my iPhone can do this now? It can do what? You can do what? And then gone. It's just on the list of things that, the iPhone can do the food the connection this is what I love about what all you guys are doing with with Spiritual Awakening Worldwide is that we're trying to get back to that I'm desperately trying to get back to that just like you mentioned it earlier people don't have time I mean if people do know watching this how much is involved with growing your own fucking food it is if you've got kids and you want to grow your own food 
that's pretty much your time done. It's um, uh, one of the things that are, are <clears throat> part of the in in there is is sort of um, uh, so the the type of grain I'm doing or, or what will for people who are coming down will be learning is that you don't need time to grow. Right, it's, it's an absolute fable. There's there's different ways of doing it. Well, okay, so so it's time. The education kind of given, whereas I think my generation was the last time people were taught to cook. So you need time. Don't have a vegetable plot because you need time to look after yeah, that. Yeah, that, that's where I was going with it. Because when I was looking at my vegetable plot thinking I've got to be down there every day. Oh, fucking hell. I'm, <laughs> yeah, no, there's, there's, so the part of the growing cycle that I, I'm going to do, and it's all about the soil. Do you know what I mean? The soil's a living organism. Mm-hmm. So you've got, you look at farms now and the, the ground's dead. There's nothing there. They've sprayed so much chemical and it, it's no longer even living. So I think it, uh, they're saying for every person who's born, you need one tonne of topsoil. And it takes 10,000 years for the earth naturally to make to- a tonne of topsoil. And we're killing it Jesus. as quick as it, you know. So the tractor goes along, sprays all the chemicals over because the agronomist says the ground needs to be neutral. Well, neutral means dead. So then you've got to put other chemicals on to make the food grow because the soil's dead. And, and it's just chemical, chemical. So that's chemical. before we're even putting pesticides <clears throat> and God knows what on to make, you know, certain things be a consistent shape or a consistent colour and what have you like we're already they're already going into a just a sea of chemicals yeah a complete sea of chemicals it's 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 and and um so when i was a kid and we used to go off on the day trip somewhere the plow you'd see a farmer going along and the plow would go along and there'd be a mass of different birds following the plow along if you ever out and about and you see a plow going along there's nothing there's no birds there when I was a kid, it would turn it over. It'd be full of everything, insects, worms, everything. Now there's nothing in mm. it, you know. So next time you're going along and yeah, you see a tractor, yeah. there'll you, you'll be hardly any birds. To, even the seagulls don't follow it. Right. If you're ever out and about and you Got see you. them, just watch, watch the plough going along and just to see how much of nature mm. is following that mm. for, for a few... We've eradicated it. Totally killed it, yeah. So, so um, the time, so the type of plots that I'm going to do is going to teach people that you don't need time. There's other methods to do. So part of the permaculture is, 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 you know, rather than weeding, companion plant or um, mulch it and then stop the weeds growing. Do you know what I mean? It's it's, it's learning that. So most people think, where like you say, you haven't got time to do your vegetable patch because you can't grow veg and rubbish. Well, eradicate the rubbish and only grow your veg. Mm. And, it, and it's the different methods that of of doing that, oh, okay. which is what is going to bring people along on that journey. Because a lot of people don't know that there yeah, is. Yeah, no, that, you know, say, I, I I literally handed back the lease of me thing, thinking I said, no, well, I can't be down there for two. Hours. It just ain't going to happen at this yeah. point in my life. And I kind of made a little justification in my head of like, well, when I'm a bit older in my life and I've got a bit more time, I, it'll be it'll be like a pastime for yeah. me as well. And yeah. I'm, I'm, I can hear myself like convincing myself all sorts of shit. That's it's, interesting. It's, it's, yeah, there's, I mean, there's a. I mean, I learned. I started learning this yonks ago. Was uh, with a book called. It's like a, a cartoon book. Five minute gardener. It's right. like you know you need five minutes a day, or call it an hour a week. Do you know what I mean? So Jesus, it's, as little uh, as that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's about suppressing everything that you don't want to grow, and feed everything you do. And okay. yeah, it's, it's uh, some of the permaculture stuff. I say on on the Instagram, and, and I follow people. All over the world, you know, there's, there's, there's community support, it's CSA, which isn't a nice word, but it's community supported agriculture, was a European idea that we exported to America and then Europe forgot. Obviously, Big Brother come in, they don't want all these little, yeah. you know, little independent, independent yeah. people doing it. We'll mm. smash all the independence. You've got then all the chemicals come in. So, in my lifetime, all the ailments, the, you know, cancer's gone through the roof. Yeah. Uh, not allergies and not, everything, yeah, yeah. everything. All, the, all these foreign chemicals in everything it's all, all to do with in my opinion yeah. in my very unprofessional opinion mm. it doesn't it coincides with the growth of everything that we're spraying all, all over yeah. our food which then you know um, fiber myalgia is there's yeah there's no known cause for it mm. is it you know i might be part of a conspiracy theory on this but if you 
I'm old enough to remember when we didn't put all chemicals all over it. And then you look at the world today, well, there's too much of a coincidence. Mm. And it may be a conspiracy, but no, it sits, no, sits listen. So, so well with me that I've gone, well, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I, I'm going to feed my family, you know. Um, uh, and the other families who are, are com- coming into it are, are, are totally already signed on to it. Like, you know, mm. why, if you love your child, why would you give it something covered with yeah. a byproduct from a fuel making system that they now spray on? your dinner you you wouldn't put but people don't know that they just watch the tesco's advert and every little helps yeah. darren and yeah. you know get two for one and it's all organic yeah. i mean aiden see if you can get up anything about the statistics of um any kind of correlation between since we've started to chemically enhance our crops because i remember listening to my uh my wife they're up, uh, her family from up jarrow way up north and her mum, a big family, seven kids, I think. And they used to be run. They used to get sent out in the garden to pick everything out of the garden for the Sunday dinner. They'd pick it all. And I don't think it just stops at food. It's everything, isn't it? It's deodorants, it's mm. skin products, it's fucking makeups. It's like we're, everything. We're, there's chemicals, pl- plug in air fresheners. There's, we've got foreign chemicals. Like, if you think about it, some people get up in a day. I mean, I did it once. You get up in a day, you, you get your whatever soap, you know, you clean yourself with that soap you know and you put your gel on your hair you put your moisturizer on you put your deo your, your, your antiperspirant or whatever it is under there then you have to shave on here you know you've got the i don't know the the air freshener in the house or the plug-in air fresheners you know that's you then then you start eating your food yeah. i mean it must be some kind of um correlation between and it, it is and is it due to scale is it because there's so many of us and we live in cities, and in the city there's X amount of people now, so we must, you know, we've got to have that many carrots, that much broccoli, that or whatever it is. Or is it just profit? Is it just mass production? I, 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 me and Julia had this conversation the other day, and and quickly going back to the chickens, is when you go into the supermarket, um, the, the sense-making is has gone out the window. There is no sense making. So when you go in, you go into the chicken section and having experienced that experience Mm. where you've got the chicken, you go into a supermarket, they've got a nice brown covered, you know, perfect chicken in a perfect grass field. And you go up and go, oh, look at that chicken. I'll have that one. Mm. Would you be so keen if you went in there and see the pictures that I had seen when I went in there? What they actually look like. How it actually truly is. And you'd look at it and go, I think I'll get some. I think I'm going to become a vegetarian. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's it's. Um, what we got there, Aiden? Uh, this is just a paper um, that is just supporting what you said. That there there have been ev- there is evidence that suggests epidemiologic uh, epidemiological. I haven't read the whole thing. Um, Between chemical pesticides, cancer is viewed. If animal studies, many pesticides are carcinogenic, e.g. Organochlorines, creosote, sulfate, while others, bloody hell, yeah, I mean, although, I mean, we all used to, we read those things every now and again, we we dare to look on the back of a label, don't we? Mm. And we sort of go, oh, it must be all right, because we've just bought it from Tesco's. Mm. Well, that's the world production of pesticides. Um, Annual world production is 1,000 metric tonnes of formulated pesticides, 1945 to 85. 3,000 times 1,000 metric tons. Jesus. In 1995. And that's, that's, that's an exponent, well, that Ex- exponential growth. Exponential growth, yeah. But that, that's, so, so going back to what you said, is that because so you've got five companies, maybe you are in control of our total food production, and people do live in cities, but the good one, you know, one to go on is uh, on YouTube is... Mm. Um, Curtis Stone, the urban gardener. Oh, okay. So, so what is starting? That's another American um, thing. Is he basically? Do you ever remember the program called The Good Life? Yeah, God, yeah, The Good right. Life that was amazing. Right. The neighbours used to come round, didn't they? It, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he 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 reminds me of them. But um, so basically, he dug up his back garden, his front garden, and he used to. He had a bike. And, and obviously all the vegetarian calves in the States he was just kicking off. So he dug up his front garden, his back garden, planted it with, with seasonal vegetables and sold it to the vegetarian cafes. He used to take it on his bike on a trailer and that's he now 
does that, he rents five other gardens. And that is, is, is mm. and it's turning chunky money, you know, mm. real big money, mm. big money. I'm not talking yeah. just For a little... proper proper food. Proper food, yeah. And, and, and so one of the principles, that's where I've learned where the no time to grow, you know, yep. is permaculture is what, that's what caught me on there was learning his methods of, of doing it and taking it from there. And that's what I'm going to do in my place. So he's a, a vegetable batch and you just grow and grow. What's and his grow. name? Curtis Stone. Curtis Stone. The urban gardener. Oh, here he is. Well. Yeah. Curtis Stone, urban farmer. farmer yeah. Wow. And so he's got a, quite an active YouTube page yeah. then, and he's just sharing, he's sharing what he's yeah. doing. And, and he lives in, he lives in a, a sizable city in the States. So, so it's, it is doable. It's just the people's awareness of of it isn't wow. isn't there. Wow! Look at all them videos. Yes, that is amazing. Yeah. And so, so when you mentioned that you're growing them and there's no, so you're not using any any pesticides. No. So is the the old thing that you always hear is, oh yeah, but you've got to keep the bugs off, or you've got to keep this off, or you've got to keep that off. So what you do, you would like companion plant. So say um, you're you're growing cabbages, you put radishes there down the sides of it. So obviously the smell keeps, or onions is another one keeps the keeps. The, so if you can distinct, is companion planting. So you you plant something, or you um, particularly plant something, knowing full well that they'll eat that before they eat what you want. Okay. So so it's controlling. It's working with nature rather than against nature. Yeah. Or saying, well, I've got these, you know, a lot of them bugs that are going to eat your stuff. The caterpillar, caterpillar is the classic one. So so it will eat some of your stuff. It goes into a chrysalis. It turns into a butterfly that then pollinates three times the amount as it's at. So you put, you plant something, commit that. Uh, or you go back to like the Red Indians. I think it was a seven seed cycle. They plant one for me, one for the earth, one for the bird, one for the insect, oh. and, and on it on it went. And oh. uh, you know, it's it's that type of. So you, you use, you're allowing for the the holistic nature of it. Yeah, you're allowing sort of the the process to to play out of itself. Yeah. So in in traditional farming like we have, is they they want to field a corn that isn't damaged by insects but they're not going to plant anything else so they then spray everything so insecticide kills everything mm. so rather than using nature they're, they're killing nature because that ends up being an argument for <coughs> vegans and, uh, or against veganism sometimes isn't it where we don't realize how much rodent life and insect life is just 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 destroyed yeah. in Growing, yeah. growing vegetables, yeah. even yeah. because of the way that we model. Yeah. So is it, is it even with the numbers where we are? Then I mean, h how realistic is it to to create this kind of um, process for the majority of people to eat this way? Well, it's it's, it's a new adventure, isn't it? You know, mm. we we could say we've, for the last, you know, like your graph does show for the last fifty years, we've mm. done it this way, and and. I think so far we've killed sixty percent of the mammal life on Earth. Jesus Christ! You know we've taken all the big fish out of the seas on a water-based mm. planet. Yeah. Well, where we're we going to? At which point do we start eating mm. insects or each other? Like you know what I mean? Mm. Is because it can't be replaced. So I think you know, and it, it's just mine. I I can't change the world. I can only start with me, and I'll change me. Yeah. And and if someone else changes them, so you know, I, I'm going to look after me and my family. I'm going to look after this family. You know, mm. I'm going to look after that family, and that family might go. Well, actually, I'm going to have a vegetable plot. So, in, yeah. if I can cut three meals out a day by using this system that I've learned, I'm not going to the supermarket three times a day. I'm yeah. going to plant this with a little bit of work. Work never killed anybody. I'm outside. Yeah. <laughs> I'm growing. I'm earthing. I'm feeling better, and I'm not going to it's the supermarket. It's a fucking remedy for the times, though. Yeah, I, I just feel it's the right time. I think you know, with the political unrest, movement, yeah, um, you, you're not dependent. If you're you're dependent on a supermarket, that supermarket runs out of food. What are you going to do? I think you fucking bang on the yeah. timing, mate. Because right now, I know everyone's got very different views about what's happening right now, and some people are really scared, and rightly so, because they're watching. The news and they're reading papers and they're listening to that mainstream just overarching just 
narrative that's just hammering at home that this is a dangerous, 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 dangerous time and therefore you can't only you can only buy certain things from the supermarket and you mentioned earlier when you were at school you know punishment was isolation that was a punishment i remember it well mm. i got put into isolation you know we had tony gooch on uh, recently who talked about when he's in jail you know the worst punishment you'll get is to be put into segregation on your own mm. i think now as we come out of this thing, certainly people that I talk to, people that are kind of in my world, there's a lot of the talk, as it has been for many years, it's just happening so fast right now, is that I think in the end we move into smaller communities again where we do realise that, you know, Darren grows the vegetables and Sam fixes the shoes and, you know, Alex teaches the kids. Really feel that's coming on for me and I think, I think people are going to be considering things like this more and more because when people are sat at home and they're locked in the house in the next few weeks and they look in the fridge and they're running out of this or they're running out of that and the idea of going to the shop is, and you know, you start to think, well, shit, you know, what does happen when the lights go out? How can we, you know, and the Americans, we, we sometimes as English, I know I do, sort of poke a bit of a fun at the Americans and the prepper kind of uh, mindset and, you know, the Second Amendment and they're ready with a weapons and because they're going to defend their honor and I, you know but now i'm starting to think fucking they've got it sorted absolutely i mean you know a, a lot of people will I, I do you know i've shot for a long time so so people say that's cruel but i'd rather i'd rather eat free range so you hunt you hunt as well don't you? yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know i more so on the recent contract, I was when I was working in London, you know, and they said, oh, What are you doing the weekend? I'm going shooting. And they was like, Oh, that's you are cruel, you're evil. And I said, Do you eat meat? And they went, Yeah. I said, Well, I think you're more evil than me. I said, yeah. Because mine's free range. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's uh, I think you, the Second Amendment is, is kind of protecting yourself, but you're protecting yourself, you're protecting yourself, your food mm. protected. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You're not mm. reliant on on anybody, you know. Mm. And and if you was to cut it down, that I'm okay. Two days of the week, I'm self reliant. You know, a lot of people haven't got gardens, mm. or you know, or I can remember as a kid in the areas we we grew up in was that you would have a vegetable patch, a rabbit cage for rabbits, or chickens for chickens, eggs mm. and meat. Now people fill their gardens up with a twenty foot trampoline and and, yeah. and and a patio set and a but rubber I, jacuzzi I, yeah i haven't got i haven't got the space for a vegetable pets well yeah what, you know where's your priorities because when you know prepping is an extreme way of it but you're just making your own independent or i'm going back in time where i am the provider and i'm going to provide my family with proper wholesome food you know and i don't think there's any any better and, and the same with the kids kids get bored you're going to have some kids who, what are you, what are you doing? Well, come and plant, plant, I did it with oh, with, with Liam. On, um, we had a pumpkin, we had carved it, and he scooping all the pumpkin out. This was years ago. And he went to throw the seeds in the bin. I went, well, 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 what are you doing? He said, oh, I'm chucking the seeds away. I said, we'll dry them out, we'll grow some pumpkins. Mm. Went, really? And then so we, we, we dried the seeds out, and then the following year, I said, oh. In the His group, own pumpkins? Yeah. In the greenhouse, I said, oh, so we dried them out and he come round the following week, turned them over, it was on tissue paper, and then we put them in an envelope and then the spring had come. So, oh, you want to get the pots? Get some pots, we'll go and plant your pumpkins. Like, and he did, and he grew his own pumpkin. And I bet he was he fucking amazed. It. He loved it, yeah. Which yeah. is like what you're getting at with, if we can get the guys down and start planting stuff, you will, you know, you will literally viscerally feel and see people being amazed that like, oh, wow. Mm. So many things are happening there. That I mean, it's, it's blowing my mind now, just thinking about it. <clears throat> Food, we take it for granted. And I think Darren G on this podcast previously said as well that the people, are, we're just so used to our luxury. Yeah. We're so used to just like people, we don't want to surrender our luxury. You know, we look out the window and we think, yeah, it's not looking good out there, but mm. it's all right in here mm. and the car's on the drive. So we'll kind of totally. bury our head in yeah. the sand a bit. Yeah. And I think we are more than ever right now, definitely at a point where ideas are running pe through people's minds now about shit what does happen if we do you know maybe we should think about that and maybe mm, you know and we are questioning things mm. but seeing seeing children in moments like that recognize like 
so many things all at once. Mm. You know, not throwing something in the bin just willy nilly. You know, just cleaning it up, saving it, putting it in an envelope. Even that bit, you're like, what? And then you whip it out six months later. Oh, remember you? Oh, yeah, 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 brilliant. Then they put them in the ground. Then you know, another four months later, they're like, it's fucking great big pumpkin. I did this, but I didn't just carve it. I grew it. It's my pumpkin. I grew this. That for a child in the in the iPhone age is magic. Mm. That's magic because there's so much happening there that is going to be fundamental to the wiring of people, young people going into a world now where we've removed, we've removed so much of this mm. and we need it more than ever. It's, it's planning Food. for the future as well. I mean, I think kids today, are, are they totally live for now. So I'm going to do this, I'm going to break that. and I, You know what I mean? Mm. It's there. Do that with like with him and the seeds. You're teaching them life skills. You're planning for the future. Do you know mm. what I mean? That's a mm. fundamental mm. human mm. existence. I am planning for next year. So rather than living in the next five minutes, I, I, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, and I'll put it on my calendar, plant pumpkin seeds like. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's plans. And the purpose of that, the purpose that comes with it, the meaning, the purpose, you know, and the, the yeah, I mean, my wife and I, we're, we're, going to be taking our children out of school because mm. we're kind of again after a long deliberation over the years I mean they've only been in the school five minutes so in the end of the year they're five and six you know but we're like we we weren't sure before anyway if it was right for us and for them with everything that's happening now again I know I keep alluding to it but it is a pretty unprecedented time certainly not happy with a lot of the things that are happening and what they're being um, I don't want to say indoctrinated with because it feels a bit strong, but they're certainly being conditioned to a way of being at the moment. And at five and six, as you've pointed out, in a different way, but it's the same in the end. Is when you when you learn, oh, we don't cuddle here, mm. right? You, you you even though in you there's a cuddle in you, but n you don't do it here, so we don't do it here. Like that's what's happening to kids at the minute, you know, like touch, feel, expression exploration like that's being ironed out and we've been we've been talking about it for a long time and we've pulled the trigger now we've written the letter and we've gone through the motions and we're setting up what the future is going to be and i'm and my wife we're coming up with ways of like how are we going to go about this we've got ideas we've got people we're going to see we're reading books but it's this kind of thing for me that is you've just said it there you're like you're learning to plan for the future you're realizing there's mathematics there's science there's geography there's biology there's everything going into growing plants mm. and growing vegetables science everything yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know how many so do you homeschooling them we're going to be homeschooling yeah. them yeah yeah this, I, I mean currently um one of the people i'll watch on youtube um daniel smacktenberger right jot that down aiden <laughs> he, he was homeschooled yeah, and he's he's he was the one um, so many times in my journey, I've learned something. I hit a brick wall, and and the latest one, we had a solstice party for the after we cleaned cleaned the woods. Yeah, and um, so there was a group of pretty spiritual people there, and um, we uh, we played a clip from human humanity phase shift, and everyone just sat there just. just just sat there listening. We played it on a uh, on a phone connected to a speaker, and every single person just went there. And at the end, we okay, and it sh sh blew sh everyone away. Yeah, and yeah. a few people there were deeply spiritual. Then and that's what I need to listen to that again. But he, it was the, the the kind of final one where his videos on YouTube are. are off Is this Dan, Dan Dan Daniel Smacktenberger? Is that him up there? Yeah, so okay. emergence is a good one. I've and seen him. I've seen yeah. him about on stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, and I, I stumbled Institute. across him. So rebel wisdom. So I've always been a bit of a rebel, and I uh, um, saw that and that fit. And yeah. I thought I was I was watching. I do, and uh, you know, before I go to bed, I'll do a video, even if it's as deep as yeah something that he does. Yeah, um, and I, I kind of process that through my sleep. Um. So will it? Is he? Is he got some ideas with the homeschooling then? Or well, the, he was or, homeschooled. He was homeschooled. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, so he goes into um, on some of his videos. Um, he actually explains. So he'll 
and it's and it's absolutely amazing the the, the story of his schooling where he's his parents were hippies, right? And him and his brother were homeschooled. But they'd he'd say, you know, question. One of the things that come to mind was, why is the sky blue? Yeah, that's a fucking universal question that every kid asks. So, so then his dad would say, right, okay, then they yeah, go off why the, low, the fuck what, is what, the sky blue? <laughs> yeah, and then they go to the library because, project, and it, and it, and so that question would then open up this. Um, bubble that had opened up that bubble and that, uh, to listen to the bloke he, he's, he's oh I will be yeah. following I'll follow through with yeah. him then Darren you've yeah. made a note of that Aiden yeah. Yeah. there's a good Excellent. one um, a good starter one for me is a uh, humanity face shift I, I just love it we played that at the start That's of this the one, party yeah. Yeah, and and, and it, it, what's the answer so you know I'm not finished I'm not I'm far from finished mm-hmm. but like at this part um, I was at that place where I watched that and another door opened. You know, you're looking at a brick wall thinking, I can't get over this, I can't get round it. Yep. I, I was kind of stuck. And I watched, I just stumbled across it and I watched it and then the door just opened in yep. the brick wall and, and then and I then went through there. another thousand mile and, yeah, journey yeah, yeah. into I, the next. Then it, that opens up another yeah. series of self-learning, self-development. Uh, but I, I find him, he's deep, he's deep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, but um, I've, I've, I've recognised him, I have seen yeah. him on stuff, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, he was. Uh, I, 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 uh, I, I, I normally watch it at least once a month, and I normally find something else. Like you know, it's uh, yeah, he's quite deep. You know. Well, um, you know, there might be a way. Then I mean, I'm thinking about the wonderful people I'm meeting through the podcast, as, and as my wife and I, like I say, we we're, we're being realistic about what we're doing at the moment. We've talked about it for a long time. We always imagined it might be when they got to kind of secondary school age. And obviously things have accelerated this year with the way things are. And also, you know, my boy, the oldest one's six, and he's already talking about his friends have got these. And I'm like, fuck, man, they're six now yeah. getting iPhones. Yeah. That's mental. Yeah. That's mental. Like the, the, the whole myriad of... of complex issues that that presents that are going to play out over time are unreal and the 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 hive kind of um the hive energy that that creates and and the, and the, like we said before about you know like when we when we chase money a little bit or when we want the stuff we get the stuff because that's the stuff we've got to get you know to sort of kind of stay in the culture that, that that's really frightens me mm-hmm. So we're we're really kind of thinking of like okay so we 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 pulled the trigger it's going to be Christmas time we've got f- some friends in the village or well, my wife has friends in the village who've done it for a long time and they're she's had a couple of meetings with them already got loads of ideas we've, we've I think we've got three or four books that they've had us get that we're reading and it's just then coming up with ideas of how we're going to go about it and putting some structure in place and finding our way of doing it. But then I started to think about podcasts. I think all the cool people that I've met, and there's probably th- things that are even as simple as, you know, because one of the books I'm, we're reading at the minute is unschooling. So it's kind of like the whole process of just reframing how it is, and we learn and what what we learn and how. So I'm at first I was thinking, right, well we could go and do this project there, and I'm thinking, well no, maybe it's just a day out. Mm. Maybe when I bring my kids over to the, to your guys' farm and we have a day and we do whatever, like that is it. Mm. Like and then we ask questions when we get back, or we write something about it, or we do an art piece about it. Like it's about the experience and being present and actually paying attention to real stuff yeah. isn't it yeah i think darren g i watched the the podcast with darren he said well you go to school you don't go to school to learn you are taught and you're only yeah. taught to be in a victorian um factory style yeah yeah system. that's that academia yeah. kind of yeah it's not uh, to me it's not academia you are it's a victorian way of teaching someone to sit on a stool and do a repetitive job pass so the you, test you go you clock on you sit and you listen to drivel and yep. do a nonsical, yep. you know, algebra. I, you know, I did algebra at school, did I? I'm 50 years old. I've never, ever used it since. Yeah. Like, you know, what's the point? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Teach me to make something and I'll make you. And be infused. Yeah. Be be committed to yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, that was, a, that was a great podcast with Darren. He said a lot of pearls of wisdom on there. Um he he he's gone on to actually do his own podcast actually which is really interesting because he's talking to a lot of young people so people who are watching listening who did find darren here with us now we appreciate you being here check out the darren g podcast because he's talking to young guys uh, and people from within the kind of criminal justice system who are trying to 
again, help young people kind of get to these kind of decisions, try and find meaning mm. in things, because that's where we are now. So the future then for you, I guess it's building up that, it's building up that permaculture community and trying to get people in and and, and therapy, it's almost like a therapy as it's, well. Then. It's therapeutic, it's, 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 um, uh, it's, it's to build it, you know, we've, we're quite fortunate with the position that we've got that, that if you like, the, the potential there is limitless. So is there enough time? Is there enough space? Yeah. And, and the more people who sort of come in, there's plenty of room to grow. So that side of it, we're fortunate. Um, and it's linking up everything that we're doing there, like, you know, so is, um, you know, with the spiritual groups that we've had, you know, this year probably weren't, a good time to start but on the on the events that we've had everyone's loved it you know it's mm. very free and mm. the deep and meaningful you know one of the cert you know that we're we're sort of opening up the meditation circle that we we do um with you know gr- like connor said graham and viv come over yeah. uh is is opening in that up and and to sit and meditate um and then when we meditate, you know, if we was to meditate now, you'd get something out of it, and I'll get something totally different. But to be in that authentic space where you're in in, in a non-judgmental in yeah. arena, yeah, is, and, and then we unravel it, like what what it meant for us and mm. what we experienced, and that makes that experience even deeper, like you know, of course, and, yeah. Um, and and we, many a times we we've gone over, and and before you know it, it's. 10 o'clock at night, like, you know what I mean? And and you're just sitting there and mm. it's just like, you know, with lockdown again coming on, it, it ain't going to happen for the next month. We we, we kind of um, have been doing it every two weeks, but we were doing it weekly, you know, when, when the weather was, was yeah, good, but, yeah. uh, you know. Um, and then obviously when you could be in a, outside there, we would sit around and, and cook, you know, I, I like to cook and we'd, cook a dinner and, and just break, it looks amazing just I've been following following the page and following the pictures at the events and I know previous guests and listeners that have, you know I think um, Hannah Hannah Green who was on who's in it to a static dance I mean I know she was keen to contact you guys and try and collaborate some kind of I mean this year's been a bastard for just allowing us to just be and get on you know yeah. with breaks on breaks off change what, what rules what you know it's obviously the same for everybody um, but yeah, the, the community that's growing, and again, coming back to what I said there about myself and thinking about my kids in the community and, and further in the future, I'm thinking about communities getting smaller and the people that we're meeting and connecting through this podcast, for me at least, is is really putting some food for thought in my mind, literally, about building something in a, in the future in, in just participating in one another's energies and not just seeing it go by you know because we're all busy on the gravy train i think the gravy train is going to fucking hit the hit the rocks totally yeah i mean it? i know you mentioned on one of the recent podcasts you did the dunbar scale yeah dunbar's yeah. number yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. so so that i had never that apart from on my learning it's the first time in public you know we we've talked about it but outside of our group that you hear it and community's getting smaller well according to that scale the mass the main number is 150 once it gets under over 150 it, it disperses, collapses yeah do you know what i mean so communities um you know with what's happening today with the election in america you know i i cannot fathom out how our general election is more important than our parish you know so if you look at the the, the two mm-hmm. someone 200 miles away tells me and Woodall what's good for me not the parish you know, and mm. I think I think it's gonna communities are gonna go back. Or well, maybe it's more of a hope or a wish. Mm. The communities go, and it gets smaller. And then, mm. you know, if I'm gonna do something and it affects you, I might think twice if I know you're gonna come around and say, "Well, look, Darren, what, what was that about? Why yeah. did you do that?" Yeah, you know, this is how it's affected me. You know, you've mm. put this chicken farm up here, and I can't breathe now because it stinks. <laughs> that you know diminished I mean? responsibility is what happens, though, isn't it? The more people we have the more um, disconnect from the reality of what it is that we're participating in seems to happen. And what is alarming, because I feel similarly, I feel like I think the people, we the people, which I know it sounds like mad talk, starting to separate ourselves from the establishment, although it's always been the case, but it really viscerally feels like 
there's a real divide happening now where our rights are just being waved off. I mean, most people watching this, I think, are paying attention and have an idea of what is actually fucking happening, mm. you know, and that, there, you know, this disproportionate, because where is this thing that, you know... Mm. But we are, we are handing over our rights, our integrity, our, our future, our our very sovereignty to to the the structure, the, the the government that is reshaping itself because of digital technology, because of these things. A lot of the things we've spoken about today, because it has to shuffle, because it's in a war race, it's in a control race. But we are getting left behind, and where I feel like we, the people, are feeling like, yeah, we need to come together, and I need to find like-minded people. I need to be around Darren, who's growing vegetables and learn how to grow vegetables. I need to be around Hannah, who's finding ways to, you know, meet new people and and let off steam in a way that doesn't rely upon a whatever a gym membership or a whatever. But then, at the same time, that very government are removing parish councils, and they're creating. Uh, larger regional government arms so all these parish councils are being lost so your ability to go and see your parish councillor is just getting taken away and as you very well said all of a sudden you'll be speaking to somebody who well you'll be writing an email to a bot machine that is to the office of whatever it is you know the east midlands district community whatever i think they've called it. i don't even know what they're calling it but I've, I've seen that that is what they're doing now it's already happening down in shropshire they're just removing all those individual town and village parishes and town councils and it's just being gobbled up into these bigger arms which are just one one stretch away from the main government mm. so that ability to go and converse with your neighbor about what may or may not be good for you that's that's slipping away that's rapidly yeah yeah, so we're 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 basically it's what we're going to uh, gear up for next year's events. Um, we had some good do's this year. Mm. <coughs> um, we had a couple of weekends. We was going to gear up for the uh, Halloween solstice, uh, but obviously groups weren't allowed to meet again, so yeah. uh, that was a bit of a disappointment. Um, so yeah, we just the, the meditation circles, the education weekends. Um, obviously, hopefully next year is going to be better than this year. Um, so we're just going to link all, all of them events up, and obviously bring people in for the, the you know for the eco therapy or the CSA that we're, we're also going to do. It's, but it's all linked, you know. It's mm. healthy mind, it's healthy all holistic. Body. Yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. paying attention yeah. to their whole existence yeah. and a bit of meaning and yeah. a bit of worth and learning and education and communion because you're going to meet other people who are actually thinking you know what there's more to this mm. and that's really empowering i mean you you must have experienced that when you well you, you've mentioned it when you with your own son work coming back from a day's graft and you sort of crack the lid on a conversation and he's like whoa mm. when you start to have these feelings when you do have that that internal mirror held up and you start to look at your life and you start to unpick a lot of the fabric and restitch yourself in a in a new shape, you know, when you find somebody else who's like, oh yeah, I I, well, I came across that guy on YouTube or I read that book and yeah, I'm I'm feeling that energy. Like that's so empowering. Mm. And what I see when I look at the pictures of you guys over there, I'm just, and like I said to Connor, you know, we will be there. My family will be there because I know how beneficial that is to just be around it. And who knows who you're going to meet? Oh, absolutely. You, you, it's, and, and then the learning from the meeting mm. is everyone... Because uh, it's so an unju unjudgmental and safe environment, it doesn't, you know, you, you people are free to speak, you know what I mean? And, mm. and as long as you're not going to be, most people there are not going to be offend, offensive in their speech. So it's mm. more edu mm. educational and mm. therapeutic anyway, like, you know, mm. it's, it's... It's free. It's free, a yeah, freedom, yeah, a sense yeah. of freedom to it. I, I don't know anywhere else where you have that type of environment where you can be non judge no one's going to judge you mm. you know and and we talk about freedom of speech and as long as you're not going to outwardly offend someone or mm. maybe because of the people there you, you learn to deliver your delivery is you know yeah. sometimes i think people say more things considered in, a bit clumsily like you know yeah, and, and yeah. um so no, there's massive we have such deep and meaningful the intention i think that's yeah. so much to do with intention isn't it when you're in a place like that when people make the effort to 
to be in a place like that, there's an intention that, that sets the tone that is, you know, we're not there for a rock. We're not there to prove a point. You know, we're not in a, you know, a long vegan um, Facebook feed where everyone's trying to prove who's got the most vegan knowledge or who is a vegan or isn't a vegan or you're a meat eater and you're not. And everyone's just trying to prove a point and it's 70 comments in and vegan warrior says that you're, you know, like it just all gets crazy and everybody's probably got good intentions. Mm. But being with people, you know, face to face in the woods, in an environment where everybody's there to just, fucking let go of all of that yeah. just literally let go and once you realise everybody has let go and I mean I use the analogy and I think I did with, with Connor on the podcast of like like it's like the wedding isn't it you know when, some, when everyone's had been in the church all day or whatever we've all been sat around we get into the night do you can see the buffet you're like right someone's going to give the green light on that buffet soon and then someone gets up on a dance floor some nutter just gets on a dance floor fuck it tie around their <laughs> head uncle and then that's it. The yeah. floodgates are open. Everybody yeah. feels like, oh, brilliant. Yeah. You know, we can let go now. Yeah. Yeah. That letting go bit. You know, me, I, I, I class myself as pretty confident in my skin. I'm not too fussed if someone thinks me, whatever, I, I dress for, I've got silly tattoos or whatever. I'm, I'm all right in my skin. But we all, we all need to shed sometimes and just let go and just... And that's what I loved about what, what Hannah was saying about the ecstatic dance, like, because I think that's like the ultimate in yeah. in, in a in a, in front of people to really just let your fucking body just go. go. Not yeah. just dance and be on the beat, but just let your body go and be. Like, that must be fucking amazing. Yeah. And in an environment like that, with, yeah. with just everybody who's there to not just... Let you do that, but empower you, yeah. empower each yeah. other. Yeah, that's oh, it amazing. Is, it is empowering. Yeah, it's mm. it, um, it is good. You know, it, that's it's fun. You know what I mean? It's it's fun. It's what we need yeah. right now, Darren. Yeah. Raw, yeah. raw of fun. Yeah, it's great. Well, listen, thank you so much for this. It means a lot for you to give us the time, and you know, uh, uh, we're going into a lockdown, so human contact will be nice. Yeah, um, we'll send everybody over to your page, which are your page Instagram is Fairfield. Farm, farm organics permaculture organics permaculture yeah. organics yeah. i'll link that in spiritual awakening worldwide yeah. i'll link all that in and uh, we'll send people over and yeah hopefully next year come over we can yeah i mean fucking you've got to hope aren't you yeah that we can live next year definitely yeah. and we'll do this again as well because yeah. i'd love to speak to the other guys as well yeah and, you know yeah that'd be awesome that'd be great yeah thank you man all right thank you peace cheers cheers Dan. <laughs>